guys, and welcome to the book club. I'm Bissy Atkins, and the book club is a platform where we discuss and explore a variety of books that are culturally relevant. We discuss their themes, their topics, we listen and learn with one another, but most importantly, we have a really good time doing so. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the book called Boundaries, written by Kevin Abosela. Boundaries is a book that follows the lives of five very different young adults that live in London. It explores their journeys, their careers, their dreams, their aspirations. We all know that this gift called life is hard for us to navigate. And a big part of that is our relationships. Boundaries provide us with useful antidotes that enables us to know how to navigate good relationships and make them successful or have relationships that fail. To join me in discussing this book, I am joined by an amazing Beautiful panel. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 Are you guys ready to get into the book? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So if you guys could describe boundaries in three words, what would it be and why? I'd say comical. Um, obviously, it makes you laugh in spontaneous moments. Things that just arise and, I, well, when we go further anyway, but there's things that make me laugh just because I know situations within the book. Um, relatable. Again, coming back to me understanding the book in my own perspective. Um, and I think it's easy. And so when I say easy, in terms of easy to read, easy to navigate through, easy to understand. Well, he's kind of taken my ones because I was going to say funny, first of all, because um, it made me laugh a lot. Um, second one is relatable. I felt like I was part of the cast. I was part of the, uh, the five, the five um, people. And I think the last one I would say thought provoking because it really made me think and question certain things and how I'd, you know, how I'd act and if, what I would do in different situations. To add to that, I'd just say enjoyable, I would say relatable and current. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great story for the generation, for this generation. And I think even if you are an older generation, you can get some key gems from the book and still enjoy it as well. Mm. When I was reading the book, not that I read that often, I, I, I think I should, but I, it felt really refreshing. It felt like, a book that I hadn't read before. Obviously, I hadn't read it before, but then a book that was very familiar because I could see myself in a lot of the characters. I feel like if you was to pick different parts of the characters, you could create a mosaic that is you. And that was really, really, really beautiful. So if you could pick one character that you related with the most, or you could see yourself most in, who would it be and why? Um, I'll say Michael, you know because he's my namesake and as a fellow Malians, you know. <laughs> um, I think it's just good to see the growth because it's like a lot of like things that he has experienced that's made him grow, I can kind of see that in myself. Mm. And yeah, I just find it re very relatable. Like, you know, it's just something like, you can see how serious he got towards the end with just a little bit of belief. And I think sometimes with a lot of people, it's just that, like, a lot of people doubt their own potential yeah. until other people see it in them and then obviously helps them to basically realise themselves, you know, so, yeah. yeah. For me personally, I did really like Fola. Like, I felt like Fola was the... She just fully embodied a strong black woman. Yeah. Like, I saw him like, yeah, I see a little bit of me in her. But then I also saw a little bit of Michael in me as well because Michael's a little bit... I don't take this thing seriously. Like, it's no, just no, like, life's not that serious. Let's yeah, so have yeah. fun. Um, and I think that was beautiful to say. And you spoke about just his character growing and developing throughout yeah. the book. And we see that across all the characters within the book, like from the genesis to the end, that all of their characters develop and they they just, they just move to different levels. Which character arc or which character development stood out to you the most and why? I think for me, I, li I liked the way Fola was introduced was almost like, especially as a black girl, being in a space that you might be the minority. I can definitely relate being in a space where I see another sister and I'm like, oh, hi. And she's like, you're right. <laughs> so when Rachel, when there was like, I don't want to reveal too much, but when she expressed her kind of offense to not being received in that way, Fola I, I, in the beginning kind of came across, okay, that's a little bit, that one, that's, that's cis code, like what's, what's going on? Mm. But then as the story progressed and I kind of, understood for last, her background what's going on in her life and stuff I was able to kind of say oh okay actually she, she seemed to warm up she seemed to always be going over to say hello and that kind of stuff so I was kind of impressed of how that kind of twist came mm -hmm. and how we saw her almost blossom mm -hmm. and see kind of her responsibilities and 
the things that she's dealing with and, and I, I quite enjoyed seeing that yeah yeah I, 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 I echo that 100% um, being in situations similar where obviously you go into the mindset of I just want to do my thing and mm -hmm. do my thing and someone approaches you like yeah so to see the turn and to see her involved into the whole friendship group um, yeah it was amazing to see and obviously I'll take it to the side of of my, Michael as well seeing him I, I, obviously there's a whole rags to riches seeing someone dump um, not knowing that they're going left or right and then being able to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of growth and there's potential to do because people around me believe there's potential to do. Now I'm kicking kicking on and, and starting something. So I like that whole progress thing. Obviously there was a you know a barrier in the middle, but yeah. we, we we heard of that. We we moved. Yeah. We, we did that. Yeah, I'd say Michael because I mean throughout the book you can see there's a clear progression of his mindset. And I think he by the by the end of the book he's starting to realise his potential. Yeah. Um, but he also remains authentic, which I liked and whilst on his own personal journey he doesn't neglect others because i still feel like he's there for others as well so yeah michael be my pick i was gonna say michael as well not that he i don't feel like he progressed in any way i feel like he was the same throughout but i liked his his genuine character yeah. he was just he's just who he is and nobody's going to change that yeah. and when he and he was open as well i like that you know he was open to to try different things and to be around different people which is really nice which I, I personally liked, so I wouldn't say he, I liked his progression, but I liked the fact that he was the yeah. same from the very beginning to yeah. the right to the end. Yeah. So I know the characters that you do like or that you're fond of, but were there any characters in the book that really irked you? Like you just didn't like. Page. Page. <laughs> page. You didn't even let me finish. Page, you didn't let yeah. me laugh. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> what did Paige do to you? Tell me. Page. 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 Do you know what she I'm is? Wicked girl. She's a <laughs> You know what she's, let me not lie to you. She's somebody that, that has not, she's a bad character. If in fact, she's somebody that the parents didn't born her well, you know, because you don't do that to people. It's wickedness, you know, it's wickedness. And honestly to God, she's a nice soul. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> I felt like there wasn't any characters necessarily that, I felt like with Rachel, I was impartial towards her. Mm. But I would say for me, towards the end, Junior definitely began to grate on me. There was just things that he was doing. That I was just mm. like, mm, you're just losing points here. <laughs> Mm. That was, I would say, if I'm gonna choose someone for me, it would be Junior. Yeah, I second that, Junior, just because, yeah, the issue, some some things that happen, I just kind of thought Junior, selfish. you know, yeah, he's selfish. It doesn't have to be such a big deal. I mean, oh, why are you taking so long? Like that was going through my head. Like, if I was a sister, they'd been like, no, you need to do this, you need to do that. But I guess he was growing, so. Mm. <laughs> Didn't like Rachel like annoy you in the beginning? Like, wasn't she just a bit moany, a bit too like? She's not sure of herself, a bit too like just complaining. I saw bits of that in her. You side. saw it, didn't yeah. that annoy it annoyed I mean, me? I wasn't really well, a fan she of She just seemed like she had a lot of expectation. Slack, you know, I think, you Why? know, given the circumstance, you know, sometimes, yeah, you could be enduring certain things that can make you behave a certain type of way. Maybe I, so I don't think, think it's, it's because in, of the pressure. Yeah, I don't facing. think it's intentional. I think it's because, you know, she was going through one calamity or the other. So, mm. you know, yeah. Do you know what it was? I think, mm. obviously, you don't realize this in the beginning, but mm. I think it was where we didn't realise how much pressure she was feeling from being in a job that she wasn't even, or in a career that she wasn't even sure that she wanted. Mm. Right. And then not even being necessarily great at it or as great as people had expected yeah. her to be. Yeah. I think that was it. But obviously you realise that towards the end. Yeah. yeah, she's literally a byproduct of her parents. I think yeah, so many exactly. people go through that. It's like, whatever your parents want and their dreams are, yeah, you have to adopt it. And okay, I now need to be the doctor yeah. my parents want me to be. But I wouldn't say it didn't, it didn't, <laughs> Uh, me. It was just Rachel. Mm. That's how I felt. I was like, oh, yeah. Man. Anybody that identifies as Rachel, I don't know if we could be friends in the beginning. Maybe <laughs> as my character develops and your character develops, then we'll be cool. So Boundary speaks a lot about relationships. And as I said in the beginning, like relationships are a big integral part of our lives. We have romantic relationships. We have relationships with our parents. We have teacher, student relationships, work relationships, platonic relationships. So many things are surrounded by relationships. So I want to speak about romantic romantic relationships first because I feel like when you think of relationships you think okay yeah my husband my boyfriend my my girlfriend my whatever right um what do you guys think personally are the three most important things to have a successful relationship romantic relationship I'd I'd say um obviously trust mm -hmm. because I feel like when it comes to stuff like trust yeah it's not just about trusting whether the person will step out and stuff like that but it's literally trusting the person with your life like um, you know, sometimes you get into certain relationships and you're just like, can I trust you to make executive decisions while I'm not there? Or, or executive decisions that will be for the greater good of this relationship. So I feel like 
trusts in terms of not just from like faithfulness but more just basically just operationally trust in day-to-day life i feel communication as well good albeit bad needs to be it needs to be said and um i think the third thing is a just a genuine love like i feel like a lot of people say like stuff like love is not enough but i feel love is the foundation of any relationship so i feel like if you have a genuine love for your partner then that stems from that that would then stem friendship respect good sex or this kind of you know but no but those three those three definitely yeah yeah i agree with communication definitely and just because i feel like it's such a constant thing and even when you're with someone you both evolve in your relationship you're never going to be completely the same so i just kind of think yeah that needs to be something that you guys actually actively work on and understand how this person communicates because some of us might say something and people are like, oh that's sarcastic but everyone's got their own communication styles and understanding as well yeah like you should want to understand someone and get to know them and learn about them and that's just how it you know, naturally should evolve so you both mentioned a few things from trust to good sex to communication and understanding do you feel like rachel and junior had what it took to get have a successful relationship I don't. I think they fell short in a lot of aspects for their relationship um, and it became very glaring as the uh, book went on. I think there was definitely a communication breakdown. Um, yeah. Definitely, um, I think different expectations. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And again, I would say that that yeah. ties in with communication because I just think certain things, if they were communicated from the beginning or throughout, then maybe they wouldn't have ended up in a number of situations that they found themselves in as well. Yeah, mm. they seem to have different importance in terms of what needs to be communicated and mm. what doesn't. And that was different one of the big issues. Yeah, well. different priorities. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think it did. And the reason why I say it did, only because personally, this is what I feel, yeah. I feel like not every relationship is meant to last forever, innit? I feel <laughs> some relationships, you Sorry. extract what you need to extract yeah, and then it will then potentially yeah. propel you for the next relationship you need to move on. So maybe that relationship was meant to terminate there and then as a result of them not being on the same page. But then at least then, maybe if if they're looking at it in the foreseeable future, then they can understand this is where we went wrong. Because obviously, like, they're young. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, sometimes if you're not, if you haven't really experienced a serious relationship, you're not really going to know your likes and dislikes. You're not going to know your wants and your not wants. Mm -hmm. You're not going to know about yourself. So I feel like, you know, fair enough, it was, it may have been temporary, but then... It serves its purpose, isn't it? And speaking on being on the same page, right? Do you feel like it's important that when you embark on a new relationship, that both partners are in similar stages in life? So whether that be your finances or your career or just where you are in your mental, does it need to be at a similar stage for that relationship to be successful? Do you know what? I don't think it does. And one of my, um, I guess, priorities in a relationship would be acceptance. Um, just who that person is as an individual. Well, you can't be accepting any Higa Haga. I, I agree. <laughs> you can't accept Higa behavior by any means. But I'm saying, if you know I am at this point in my life and I'm working towards X, Y, and Z, well, then you need to accept that. Mm-hmm. And Higgy hagginess may appear well, along the way. Up but with action and I could actually mm. see you working, not like, oh, I want to be a rapper and I don't see anything. Yeah. It always goes to rappers. I feel like that's what Higgy Haga for you. Higgy Haga, I just think, do you know what it is? Okay, for me, I would say somebody does need to be on a similar page. And I'm not saying that has to look exactly like me. So I'm not saying that we have to be in the same place in our careers. But I do think we have to share the same mentality and that mentality will get you to a similar place if that makes sense so for me yeah i agree i, think, I know yes, what you does, mean but i don't necessarily think there's like a blanket rule or way about the, um you know go, going about this but mm. for me i just think yes you do have to be accepting but i think we also have to be very careful of what we're actually choosing to accept mm. so as we said if we can see that someone's got plans and they've got aspirations and they want to go in those things they want to do and you can see that as you said mm. with the actions mm. then fine but not everyone is like that mm. right. so i think that's what we need to be careful Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because you won't want someone who's so carefree and just doesn't know where they're going, and you're so focused, and then you kind of feel like they're holding you back. Because then I feel like that would be a big issue That's for also me. Big investment. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the partner that you invest in technically yeah. is yeah, we're talking is a big part of your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I you think. Kind of need to be on the same do you know? Is I think it depends on what you want in a yes. relationship. I think that. Let me be honest with you, because there's some people that want a relationship to maybe out of comfort. Or some people want a relationship because they're bored. Some people want a relationship to help them identify who themselves are in it. So I think I think it depends on the actual individual what it is that they want. I feel like if you're building towards something, you know, serious like let's say kids, marriage, and all that kind of stuff, then 
I wouldn't say it matters, but I would say so far as you can tolerate, accept, and mm. see the potential mm. in that person in terms of what you want, then it's fine. But then if not, then to your tent or Israel. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, when we are in that relationship dynamic, do you feel like society has basically told us what roles that each person is meant to play in that relationship? Uh, I feel like traditionally, yes, but I feel like in 2020, it's just a bit blurred. Mm. And I feel like that's also why like dating in 2020 is hard and difficult because I think um, there's more opportunities for women. Um, things are a lot less traditional, but then sometimes there's still that expectation. So it is, I think it's quite blurred and quite difficult. To Sorry, let me, let me interject for my sister here. <laughs> God bless you for saying that. Let me not lie to you. The reason why it's messed up mm. and it's collapsed now, yeah, because nobody knows their role again. 100%. That's it. And do you know what it is, yeah? I'm not going to say what role is what. That's for you to define. Mm. Right. But me personally, I'm a traditionalist. People I will not lie to you. Staunch yeah. one to the core and I will not change for anybody. <laughs> With that being said, I like, you know, a man to do this one mm. and a woman to do this one. Not to say, not to say I want my woman to be submissive, mm. but everybody should play their role. But is there anything wrong with being submissive as a man and being a man? I think in the sense of I like the whole idea of, you know, like let me say like this. A man to be, let's say, the CEO of, of the household. CEO? Yeah, then the woman to be the COO. Everyone knows that the COO is, is as integral as the CEO. Uh -huh. But operationally, you know, you'll be doing all this kind of stuff, you know, all these good jobs and all this kind of... Like, let's use um, Barack and Michelle Obama, for example. Okay, okay. Very fantastic, okay. very okay relationship. <laughs> of what we see, by the way. Of what we see. But it's like, I feel like a woman is meant to be a man's safe haven. You speak life into your man, speak good things into your man. And then the man is meant to reciprocate that and love the woman unconditionally and they grow together and they have loads of children and just enjoy their life. That's <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so for you, Mr. Traditionist, yeah. if the gender roles were to turn on their head and the woman was now the CEO and you was the COO, how would you adjust to that or would you be... Oh, because, he he didn't shit. even let me land, so you wouldn't be able to deal with that? Ah, uh, good job. I mean, sorry, sorry, English, isn't it? sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's not possible. No, 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 no. And for you, sir? Because let me, sorry, let me, can I land? Can I land? Let yeah. me tell you something here. Basically, ideally for me, you know, my mom sent me to school. My mom didn't say I should be somebody's omodo, you know. Omodo is housemate. Wait, 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 sorry. Wait, wait, wait. let me interject. Then, what yes. does that mean, your CEO? No, 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 Let me, let me explain something. Explain what? The worst thing I don't want is for my wife to give me a period pint to go and wash. I don't want that. I need it that, but let's wait, say, for example... I'm confused. I'm confused. So you can't do the laundry? No, the difference is I can do the laundry, but not that you would throw your pints on me to go and tell me to wash it. So who told you that she needs to throw her pants? Her for her to wash? No, but let me tell you something. I will no be honest with you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me say Let me say Let me say it. Let me say it. Let me say it. Let me say my own This is... I know this is going to sound bad, yeah? But when you give women too much power, they go crazy. It I'm sounds sorry. bad. I'm it sorry. Is bad. No, I'm sorry. It sounds bad. It is bad. Yeah. Why would you say that? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's the truth. So with that being said, it's like, I need things to be, you know, very okay in it. But that's my opinion, Sha. But why is that the truth for you? I don't know. I just feel from experience of what I've experienced, it's not, you know. So I wouldn't want that for me. That's me personally. So it seems as if you, Mr. Traditionalist, that you would not be able to survive in a relationship if the woman was CEO and you was the COO because you fear that she might just throw her period pants. No, it's wrong. It's wrong. Let me tell you something. I believe in um, equality, not equity. But wait, I will land there. What I'm trying to say is, yeah, woman can be any, you know, she can have any job she wants. If she wants to be the CEO of a Forty 250 or Forty One Hundred company, that's fine. But for house and bedroom, I'm CEO. That's okay. it. There's, we are not nothing, sharing. No, no sh so how do you feel then about a woman earning more money than you? Ooh, girl. Mm. Do you know the do you know what do you know the thing is 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 okay for the time being, but you see with me, let me not lie to you. So me, I grew up in a competitive household. Mm. Nobody wants to carry lasts. So that being said, I'll say, okay, madam, this year you've won me, next year I'll win you. Okay. That's it. But that's how we got the Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like that then ends? Uh, affecting how things are in the house, or do you think? Hundred and ten percent. Women can't be trusted with too much money, honestly. Wow. So, wait, wait, wait. wait. The most outlandish statements right you, now. In terms of bills and everything, do you expect the woman to contribute fifty-fifty? Because you want to be the CEO, are you going to pay all the bills and I, the rent I, and everything? I have, no, listen, let me tell you something here. If let's say I have it my way and you, I'm the CEO of the household, I will pay even hundred percent. No, if you like, keep your money. I don't mind. Just know that 
you know, I like my things. That's it. What does that mean? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to elaborate. So let me give you an example, yeah? If let's say you, if let's say you're, you're working, uh. for example, let's say, I expect, you know, that food will be ready, you know, okay. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> if, you, if, yeah, if you can't, if you can't, if you can't, um, if, because you see the thing is with me, I like convenience, you know? So let's say, for example, I see the way I envision myself is if my wife is busy and I'm busy as well, we can have a model to kind of help us to assist, you know, with all this kind of stuff, you know? But with that being said is that, just know that when it's time to, you know, jangle over, then at least be there. Do you get what I'm saying? Jangle over is a rough place, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, sir, would you be able to abide in a household where the woman is the head, COO, and you are the CEO? I mean, CEO. And you know what I'm talking I about, do, right? No, I yeah. do. I get your question. <laughs> um, for me, I don't share the same views as Michael okay. um, entirely anyway, but I would prefer if I was COO and she was CEO, uh, sorry, CEO, yeah. and she was COO. If it was inverted, I wouldn't have that much of an issue with it, but, you know, that healthy competitive nature of trying to outdo each other in respects to salaries and whatnot, or roles, who can do this the best or who can do that the best, I don't mind it. It's, it's good. And ladies, like I've heard it from the men's point of view, right? But would you even want to be the CEO of your household? No. Mm. no. Good, good, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, there's 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 lots of um, I guess debates about this. But for me personally, I think I don't know. I could be wrong, but I think for me, my opinion is women will naturally submit if a man is doing their mm. traditional. Yeah, role. yeah, you and would. If that's what you want. Then fine. I don't think everyone wants that, and I don't think every man wants that. So I can't necessarily say. But where I, I can understand and I can relate to that, I wouldn't want to be. Mm. I would want. I would want a man that's able to take the lead. And if he is able to take the lead properly, then I'm happy to do my more traditional roles. I don't have a problem with that. Mm. But if you can't do your leading properly, then don't be talking to me about cooking and washing and other things. That I support you want that, which is fair. No, yeah. it's, it's good because for me personally, I don't think every not every man can lead, and that's fine. Mm. For me, I can lead very effectively. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with traditional roles, but I think in terms of that, yeah, I'm traditional, but I like the flexibility as well. So if I know much, because my strength is cooking anyway, so I'm fine, I like cooking. But if you can help me clean and stuff, and you like yeah. happy cleaning the bathroom or the toilet, I don't really like cleaning the toilet. So we can be flexible, like let's play to our strengths and weaknesses. It yeah. doesn't need to be, you need to cook, you need to clean, you need to take the bin out, like let's work just, together. Just work to each yeah. other's strengths. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. then even then, when we're discussing CEO and COO, even now we're talking about sort of traditional tasks and the man sort of being, you know, the finance and the provider, but the women doing sort of the more domestic, domestic stuff. But that's not necessarily what the CEO does. Necessarily is yeah. just allowing the man to just take lead. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. 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 I always see it as the man being the head, but the wife being the neck and yeah. the, the head yeah. can't stand yeah. One doesn't work with that. They're saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yours was quite extreme the way no, you no, said no, no, it. Wait, wait, it was the period. Why did you say that? It was just like, about the period pants. Exactly. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What are you telling me? Let me tell you now. Let me. I, from experience, I've seen women that earn more money, yes. and they will send the man out of the house. What kind of rubbish is that? Why? Well, why is it because uh, she's earning more money or what? Yes, because she's now wearing the trouser and he's now wearing the skirt. No, but that's to do with work? respect yeah. rather no, than that's what I'm saying. Month, if, what I'm saying is, if you give her too much leeway, she will not respect you. That's it. No, maybe some women you've encountered. All women are not like that. Okay, no, the difference is, I'm, I'm, you know, with me, I like to speak from experience. So maybe your experience is different, but for me, I've seen when women earn good money. They don't know how to talk to men properly. In fact, they are, they are very outlandish. With their In fact, I, I don't even have a word yet, but it's ups, it upsets me. Sounds like you're having flashbacks. Passionate. It upsets me, seriously, it upsets me. I get it. So, it upsets me. Mr. CEO, right? Yeah, I have please. a question for you. Go on. Do you know your love language? Yes. What is it? So the one that I like to receive is words of affirmation. You'll be saying, Daddy, you're doing well. Uncle, you're the best. <laughs> Chief, nobody passed you. You're not, you know, you know, as in nobody can rival you, you know? Tell me these good things. Even if I'm not doing it, just tell me and I will perform above and beyond expectation. The one that I give to people is acts of service. So I'm not really somebody that says, I love you. Like, I can say, obviously, if I like, but I'm not really one that, I love you, I can't live without you. But it's like, for me, everyone, I think people can all testimony that the people that I love, literally, I will die for, like, I will give anything for. Literally, if I have the last £10 in my pocket, I will give it to you so that I can suffer. It's bad, but with me, I wear my heart on my sleeve in it. So it's like, 
if I've got you, I've got you. That's the way I show my love, innit? That's beautiful. I, I wanted the violin to play. Like, I wasn't liking you for a second, but now <laughs> you've redeemed yourself a little bit. Don't worry, we'll date together. <laughs> and for everyone else on the panel, do you know your love languages? And if yes, what are they? For me, um, I, don't, I'm, I feel like I'm a bit of a mixed bag. I feel okay. like, personally, I feel like in terms of giving or what love languages show, I do feel like I do different aspects of them. But I think for me, it would be acts of service in whatever way that's actually presented. So if it is someone's way of showing that they love me is through words, then as long as I understand that, that's fine. Or if it is by giving gifts or helping or just doing something that I know is their way of showing, then I'm happy with that is what I would say. Yeah, mine's a mixture of, yeah, like if um, someone tells me, oh, you're nice or compliments and stuff. And also gifts, but not in terms of it needs to be expensive. Mm. But I like a card on our anniversary or my birthday remember me like oh I know you really like these chocolates like little things makes me feel like yeah you actually know about me yeah. you remember me and oh you're actually out there and you thought about me so to me I feel appreciated that way it's, it's, a, it's a little bit tricky for me I mean mm. there are only five is that correct yes. mm. I don't feel like any of them really speak to me or resonate within me so I'm just still trying to figure that aspect out and if you feel like that right I feel like a lot of people say that is important for your love languages to kind of be a line or to understand your partner's love language right. if you don't really none of them resonate with you then how mm. is it important for you in your relationship it's not as it pertains to love languages for me not particularly like I said it doesn't really resonate if uh you know the person I'm seeing um speaks about acts of service you know I like when you do x y and z I'll go above, above and beyond and you know I'll try and cater to that need but as it goes for me me I'm, I'm a much more simpler person yeah you sound you sound really mellow like, yeah, you, really, want, yeah. Really you should be like a voiceover yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just, like, right. just treat me nice I'll treat you nice we'll get on well. what does that mean because that's you know that's different to different people and it looks different hmm. right so as it you know you make a good point but then I just can't any one of those five I just can't say it's this because then that would just be yeah. so maybe false. It's a mixture for you. is that allowed yeah, yeah of course. course I assumed it was this is it yeah. this is the one I omit this is the one I like no, to receive. Sure. And it can change Do you know what it is, well. yeah? It when when you actually yeah. take the test, yeah, you actually realise that it says these are your strong ones and it actually prioritises it in order. So I think everybody uh, has a mixture of, of yeah, all five. Yeah. Right. Just but it's just there's one or two that will be stronger than the others. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I might need to revisit that. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you the link. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> as well as love languages, we have like emotional intelligence. Mm. Can the lack of emotional intelligence be a contributing factor to a demise of a romantic relationship? 100%. 100%, like, for real? Yeah, definitely. Why? Why do you think so? I think um, emotional intelligence affects the way that you love that person. It affects the way that you communicate. If some pers if somebody doesn't feel like they're understood or their partner isn't trying to at least understand, you may not know everything, but sometimes just showing, okay, you know what, I don't know, teach me help me understand what, what you're feeling that can really help somebody but if you have no form of intelligence or even asking an intelligent question <laughs> ah, did you go to school yeah. you didn't go to school you didn't, and it's just it's such a drag trying to teach somebody basic things mm -hmm. of like how to communicate take the love out of it if well, you see me i'm upset it's okay just to ask me are you all right instead of just thinking well you decided to be silent so i just wanted to leave you and then we want emo Ouch. emotionally mature people. But, but somebody could perceive that as well. Because you were being quiet, I didn't think you wanted to be bothered. So I just left you. Yeah. Whereas when you're emotionally mature, it's okay to just ask if you're all right. Okay. And, you know, and I think that does impact a lot of like relationships and the quality of relationships that you can have. At the same time you say that, again, for a bit of spanner in, um, that is someone's emotional intelligence and it's not incorrect. I think it's just where they are, but then that might match somebody else's emotional intelligence. So in terms of a parent, you two might not be compatible. Yeah, but I think mm -hmm. I, I think there's levels to an emotion, someone's emotional intelligence. And if someone is used to people around them, when maybe they've previously asked, are you all right? And it's been a bounce back of, leave me alone. That's mm -hmm. something that's going to hold a trade. Kind of oh, you're quiet. I'm mm -hmm. But I think emotional intelligence doesn't come necessarily from, it's not, from my yeah. understanding, it's not, necessarily based on your previous experience it's that person. it's that's that's what that's more of a, an experience we're talking about an intelligence i know but then i think an experience builds an intelligence you you you, you gain intelligence from experiences, experiences. Mm -hmm. but everyone so, everyone's different there we go mm -hmm. so i i wouldn't i don't necessarily I agree with that I'm, I'm just saying in the, in the fact of 
it it has it it has its stick say, but then when you talk about teaching, I think if it's a constant teaching, yeah, a that's when it yeah. becomes a burden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's to happen one two times, you're like, listen, this is because obviously that's what you're there for. You're there to this is you know how you want to be loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that person doesn't. Yeah, but they know they want to love you, mm-hmm. so you then have to di- direct it. You both direct each other. That's why you know it's a, it's a companionship. You work together mm-hmm. to grow something. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think that with certain times, I wouldn't say it's an ultimate demise. I just think if there's a, if there's a constant, you're not trying to hear me. Okay, this isn't for us. Mm. So, mm. Could, yeah, go I just want to quickly just add yeah. to, um, based on the comment of well, I thought this is how or this is what I thought you want. I found myself asking a question to somebody: Is that what you think, or is that what I told you? Mm. And I think when it comes to emotional intelligence, you have to ask yourself: Am I acting based on what I think or the information that that person has told me. Mm. Do you understand? I think that's the difference. Yeah. Gems. gems. That's the yeah. difference. Gems. I was gonna say yeah, gems, yeah. gems. Ah, well, I thought she would do that. Okay, but is that factual or what you think? Have mm. you asked? Yeah. You may be right, but unless you ask, you will know. Mm. Word, 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 word. <laughs> word, 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 word. <laughs> and it just seems listening to everybody that obviously romantic relationships are very not complicated but there's a lot of layers to them and for them to be successful it takes a lot of intentionality it takes a lot of maturity it takes a lot of intelligence for it to be what you desire it to be and on both parties right we're now in the 20th century right and this dating game, a lot of people are like, oh, dating is like trash. Dating is just like, uh, the dating is just like, uh. <laughs> So in one word, each of you, if you could describe the dating scene oh, today to date, Damn. what would it be and Damn. why? It's the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> it's the real ghetto out here. It's, it's, I think it's really hard, really and truly. Um, I think this popcorn generation, everything's so quick and fast. Um, I could be perfect for a guy and he could talk to me one, two days or a few weeks. And then all of a sudden just ghost. There's no explanation. What have I said? What have I done? Just to even let me know so I know that I'm not the problem here, that it's actually you're mad. Do you mm. get what I mean? But <laughs> like, it's just, it's quite difficult. And I think sometimes some guys don't even give you the opportunity to even show yourself or be your true self. Yeah. Um, I know people that have gone on dates and the guy was like, can you stop laughing too much? <laughs> So I can't love, like you can't even be yourself anymore. And you don't want to be in a place where you're second guessing every move you make. You can't be who you are. Yeah. So you're, you're going out with this guy, you're thinking he wants a serious girl. So I'm going to be very serious. I'm going yeah. to be very mature. I'm going to act in a certain way. Do you know what I mean? It's just very, very difficult to navigate. And for anyway, for me personally, it's just been quite difficult. Would that come back to, okay, if someone says he... Is that them telling you they want a serious person or you're thinking they want a serious person? Just thinking. Like, if I'm, if we're dating, I don't really know who you are, but from what I perceive of you and how you act, I might say, okay, this guy, he acts a different way, so I will start to work, you know, work in that kind of, in that manner. I, I think that's what makes it difficult in mm. terms of you're now trying to... Mirror Adjust him. to mirror him. Yeah. Trying to be for him. Yeah. And if you're not, you're not. That's how we date. Yeah, you're not on date do, to yeah. find deals things out. If you're not, I do you're not. think like there's an element of selflessness that comes into dating so I don't think you should change to suit the person but I, I think you should be aware and yeah. you know it, again it comes down to like emotional intelligence yeah you know? so we see in the book that there is a particular pressure that one of the characters faces with regards to seeing if his partner's family kind of likes him right mm. how important is it in your relationships or the people that you're dating for your family to be accepting of them or to like them and if they don't like them would that add pressure or make you not want to be in that relationship with that person i'll be honest as disrespectful as it sounds i don't think the family has any determining factor and not even zilch, zilch ultimately i don't think they have determining like I don't think they're the, they're the deciding factor um, in terms of family because it all starts with within. And if the two people love each other and they recognise that they're right for each other, then that's solely what matters. And the family's got to adapt, essentially. Mm. I, I disagree. You disagree? Yeah. Why do you disagree? I think it depends on what my family doesn't like about the person. So if it's a valid thing where my mum says, this guy, he's not very serious, he's not ambitious, he's not going to take you to the place you need to be, I'd sit down and actually think 
Is this correct? Yeah. If it's something me like very small, like sometimes it could be like, oh, he's not from the same village as me. Then I'm like, forget it. I don't care about that. But it depends on what the actual issue is. And I actually have to sit back and say, is this valid? Mm. And if, if it can't run, if I'm, if I'm really seeing that, you know, what my mum's saying is correct, then I'll say no. Um, what I'll about if you see that she's not correct? Then I'll be like, mum, you, I'll try to educate and show like, this is what he's doing. This is, maybe it's just, it might be a matter of she just doesn't know. She might be seeing from the outwards, you know, looking in, and she just doesn't know the whole, what he is about. And if you tell her, educate her, show her what he's doing, then hopefully things change, hopefully. Mm. I, 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 would, I would like my parents' perspective on things, but um, obviously, ultimately, I'm, I'm decision maker. Yeah. Um, but I would love to hear that my parents love the person I'm with. Mm. It's, 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 we're we're going to be one big family, and um, I'm not all about ruckus and drama. All of that is unnecessary. Obviously, it does become what is the reason why you don't, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, it becomes down to me making decisions. But I would, in general, love my parents to take to the person I'm with. The relationships with our parents, I, I see them as the first ones we ever form, right? With our parents, with our families. And there are many things that we do in life that we do to please our parents or to meet up to their aspirations and their dreams for us. I'm African, I'm Nigerian. Is everybody Nigerian on the panel? Yeah. yeah? I'm Nigerian, All right, yeah. cool. So they, sometimes they'll be like, be a doctor, be an engineer, be this, this, and that. And they put a lot of emphasis on or a lot of pressures on us to kind of meet up to the standard that they want to, they want us to attain. How important has that been for you guys personally? to meet up to the standards that your parents want for you, whether that be in relationships at the time you start dating or in your career or in anything that you do. How important is that for you? Well, <laughs> I threw a massive spanner in the works in my household when I didn't finish uni and said I want to pursue comedy. I mean, you want to be a clown. Like, I span my house upside down. Um, <laughs> but... Um, all has worked out and it's great. I think that ultimately when my parents expressed their resistance, it was more, we just want you to do well. Well, yeah. We just want you to do well. And then obviously with the education and doing well, they were to be like, okay, our spirit is now settled mm. because you're, you've done well, you're doing well. So those professions were kind of just masks of, what they perceived as well when they maybe first came here mm. or, you know, reputable jobs that will always kind of have, you, you always need a doctor, you always need a lawyer, money, stability is what they kind of wanted of for me and just kind of felt that it was just those careers. But now in this day and age, you can have the same money, the same stability in other lines of work. And this generation is doing a really good job at at least educating our parents who are from other countries or immigrants that that's very possible about being a doctor yeah so it's not about appeasing them it's just more so about giving them peace of mind yeah, so they know that they are secure yeah. yeah, to... it's all they knew at the beginning really yeah, Do yeah. doctor engineer you know? <laughs> well, yeah that's all they knew so obviously at the end of the day that's all, that's all you're going to be they're going to read off to you as many times as possible if you go into the left direction or right direction as long as you're showing them that what i'm doing is just as good i'm happy yeah. and i'm stable i'm good and i'm not doing riffraff then they'll be like, you know, okay, cool. I'm learning something new. And yeah. That's, that's how, it. That's how, that's how it, goes. it takes time as well. Yeah. It takes time. It takes time. It's all a process. Um, but you mentioned something. And you mentioned something like about this Cisco. And I want to ask you, mm. if I didn't know you from anywhere, right, mm. and I just ended up in your workplace, for example, are we meant to be friends because we're black? I think the word meant or the phrase meant to be is strong because yeah. technically, no. But for me, personally, I think it just depends on who you are as a person, mm. especially in this current climate. Like, I just think that there is kind of like this unwritten solidarity within our community. For me, or yeah. that if I see somebody, I see her and I'm going to let her know that I see you, sis, or mm. I see you, bro. Mm. And I think that that is something that I have personally experienced and has made me feel really welcome in spaces where I have been the minority. So I knew what that did for me. Mm. So anywhere anywhere I am where I can do the same for someone just to make them feel a little bit more relaxed, oh, why not? It's free. Well, personally, it depends on who you are as a person as well. I feel like just because you're black doesn't mean we're going to be sisters and we're going to have like similar, you know, um, 
we're going to have any connection. I think sometimes some, some, especially, I mean, personally, some women, we just, I feel like we clash and there's a lot of kind of like, they look at you, they stare down at you and they make you feel uncomfortable. So I'm not going to go over there to say hi to this person that's screwing me. There's no way. But if I see someone that, okay, they're kind of similar to me, they like the same kind of things, or maybe they're quiet and it's easier for me to talk to them, then I will do that. But yeah, some some women, I, I do try to stay away because I feel like it can be a bit toxic at times. So just going back onto what Rufa said, you know what's funny is that some people will obviously go into the workplace, let's say there's a minority, and you see your sister or your brother come in, it's almost like, oh, you're coming from my spot. I probably that's the screwing. Because mm. I, I think most places, like so. most places, you sit there and go, okay, I'm the only black person in this chair. If some, another black person comes, the only chair available is this chair. Mm. Is that your mentality? No, no, no that's, not my, that's not my mentality, but that's how I see things and uh, how people perceive things. I see how people perceive things. And well, my mentality is why do you think they do? just through diff- different conversations. There's, there's conversations I've had with other people in terms of, oh, I've gone into my workplace, this person's treating me a certain way, different to how they're treating my colleagues who are white. Um, why do you think that's happening? Oh, they're saying things like, if you want my space. So I'm looking at that. There was only one space within certain fields for the minority, which mm-hmm. is the black folk. So I, I believe that there's one chair in and then two people are they're battling for that chair. Most times it's they're battling for that single chair. If there's another chair that comes along, then, you know, then we're, we're thankful for that. And that's what we're fighting for. But I think in general, most industries, it's a case of you're all dotted around. So if you're in the same space, it's that, it's that same chair. But on a, pers- on a personal, on a personal, I am all about, you know, not building maybe a, a massive friendship, but just letting you know, I know you're here. Mm. Um, I've got your back. Mm. I'm not, even, it's not even a case of, have you got my back? Yeah. But me personally, it's like, you know what? I'm here. Welcome, innit? Like, you, you're, you're welcome. Let's, let's do what we need to do. It's, it's kind of funny because even the same people that I would say that when they first met me screwed me, when we actually sit down and talk to each other, we actually have the same story and we have the same struggle, which is really interesting. And sometimes we've had like, um, there's a lot of BAME events in my workplace. And when I actually sat down and speak to the people that I thought didn't like me, we're like, oh my gosh, like this, we've, we've had the same, we've had the same type of manager that's been treating us bad. You know, we've had the same experiences and it's, it's quite interesting. So yeah, I, sometimes I stay away, but when, when I do get to talk to people and actually have a one-to-one with people, I realize actually we are, very similar. Yeah. And fundamentally, do you feel like when you do see someone that's similar to you, a black person in your working environment or in just any space, do you feel like it's important that we connect on that level just because we are black? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's that's the essence of life to uplift others and if it's someone that we can relate to and looks like us, certainly it's our duty for me to uplift each other's. And if we're not going to uplift them and be best buds, as the panels mentioned, at least don't tear them down mm. in, in the process. So that's, that's my and take on it. It's funny you said uplift because my question was connected. Why did you interpret that as uplifting? Because mm. I feel like just connecting and speaking, having conversations like Ruth mentioned, is a form of uplifting. At least at, um, showing someone that you're there with them and you're yeah. experiencing the same thing can be a boost for the self-esteem. That's mm. my, that's my thoughts. I don't know about anyone else, right? But in my days of the corporate world, especially, I absolutely, it made it, it was so enjoyable for me having at least like one friend at work. Mm. I don't know about you guys. 100%. But mm. Yeah. So, so if there's, if an opportunity arises and you have an opportunity to relate or at least interact with somebody who maybe looks like you who can kind of you could just be sending each other WhatsApp like oh, did you see that Lisa <laughs> that Lisa came in today and she's like yeah 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 it yeah. just makes the experience just a it's little bit more better you know yeah. Yeah. and it's nice yeah. you know so what happens when you are friends with people from different races do you believe in policing their actions and their behaviors with for example let's say for example your friends with someone who's asian or someone who's white do you believe in the policing of their interaction so if they can say particular words or do particular things what are your thoughts on that hmm. oh yeah i always i always me personally i always like that that i don't i don't say it aggressively but i'm like yeah, you can't do them things and i think we just i think it's teaching yeah okay i teach them that Mm. That way isn't acceptable as a whole. Um, not only with me, and I'm your friend. 
So yeah. imagine if you didn't say it to someone as your friend. Um, luckily enough, I haven't, I haven't encountered that. Yeah, me, our early conversations, I, did, I think they, they know they can't do that with me around. You know what? I personally haven't had that experience with my non-black friends. I haven't had to police anything they've, they've said. They haven't said anything. I'm like, yo, what are you, what are you doing? Mm. However, I have had a friend who has a white friend who she felt that, especially during like the whole Black Lives Matter um, campaign and, you know, the protest, she felt that her white friends weren't speaking up for the community or for what was going on. And she took great offence to that. She was like, you know, mm. you're my friend. Mm. There's a lot of things going on about my particular race and I'm not hearing or seeing your support visually or in a way that I deem comfortable and acceptable because we are friends. Mm. So, you know, again, I personally haven't had any of my non-black friends do that, but I'm just trying to think, okay, if at all that was the case or if they said something untoward or they used the N-word or they, you know, used a derogatory term here and there, like how I'd react to that. I think just like Ola, I'd educate them and say, you know, that's not okay. You can't do it just because Biggie says it in his lyrics or two back <laughs> that I read. Just, just bleep that out, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, I do think that we should like lead by example, especially when it comes to that kind of like music stuff. That means they're bringing it. If you don't want them to say, why are you saying it? Yeah. And why are you saying it? Yeah. It's easier said than done, to be fair. Really? No, no, it's not. So you say lyrics, it? Lyrics, No, no. Okay. 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 That sounds crazy. But... Yeah, you'll just flow the lyrics because it's just what you're going to do. So you're not going to start beeping up because Simon's next to you, but then because Funke is next to you, you're going to say it. So mm. it's, it's it's something that I'm allowed to do. Not allowed to do, but if, if it was that sort of situation, it's something that I'm allowed to, in this situation, do because of whatever. But it's still, I'll still police it. As, that's my thing. Mm. There's going to be certain things that that person will do. That's their thing. And there's certain things that I obviously, obviously can't police if it's their thing. You know what I mean? Their cultural, whatever, whatever. It's again when they step into my side, would mm. if I'll police it if they're doing something that's against something that I would do. Yeah. This one's gonna be a tough one. By a raise of hands, who grew up in a single parent household? Women, I'm sorry, but quite a lot of us are crazy. Ah, and no meal. No, mm. let, let, let me let me say remember there was one time when um he um, asked his football coach if it was his dad, and I was so embarrassed. Anger there. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel the realness, man. I hate his guts. I piss on his grave. Straight up, don't care. Straight, safe. How are you guys taking that? This, this, it's, it's not. It's He's difficult. Not on oh, yeah, wait, it's difficult. Wait. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was there really just thinking about what you were just saying. <laughs>